Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, is the PC Muscle Race himself, Laurent Dawkins. What's poppin'? Yes. Nailed it. Also joining us is the mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klebaum. I just want to say that your microphone looks like a vanilla ice cream, and I'm hungry. <laughs> and it's Laurent's fault because he ate a donut before we started recording. Well, Hi, I- I got Come it on, because it's... of all, like, the popping and, like, sometimes, even if I don't notice it, like, you can hear me breathing into the microphone and that's real annoying, so I apologize to everybody who heard me, but... Listen, listen, it's never a podcast if I'm not eating, and if I'm not eating on a podcast, that means there's something wrong with me or I've been kidnapped and that is my, that is my, my cry for help. Yep, and crinkly bags and all that stuff. <laughs> I, try to, I try to mute the microphone whenever I, I, I am going just all in on a bag. Yeah. <laughs> Also joining us is that retro code, my friend, my pal, my pal block confidant, Eddie V. Hello, Ooh. everybody. Let's make a man some pop songs. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. How's Hello. everyone's week going? It's going. It's, it's going. Getting, it's getting interesting because now that it's March, um, everybody's about to lose 500 500 uh, what? About to lose 500 what? Oh, he froze. Yeah, he did. <gasps> now we'll never know what the 500... Oh, Ed. There he is. I'm here. 500 what? Everybody's about to lose 500 what? $500 because of for all the games that's about to drop. Oh, 500? Yeah. Oh, hold on. What, that's what, it? What, 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 what games drops are we having? Hold on. Man, you got... You Febu- got uh, Triangle and, Strategy. Uh, you got... Yeah. Sorry, Ed. Go ahead. You got tri- uh, Triangle Strategy, Grand Turismo 7. You got Kirby... Um, Grand, Ghost Turtle Riot, so is already, Grand Turtle 7 is already in some people's houses thanks to Amazon. That was, that happened with Elder uh, with Elder Ring 2 last month. There was a lot of games that was coming that came out before its release that they got every for time Amazon I order and something Best on Buy. Amazon, let's, it comes earlier, it comes on the day of. Let's see. Let's see. We got we got GT7, Triangle Strategy, uh Chocobo GP for those people that care about that stuff. Uh, GTA 5 is finally hitting Series X and PS5. Uh, Tunic. Wait, isn't that Tunic. old? Isn't that old? Tunic? No, no Tunic. it was just no. announced That's... like four years ago. That's all. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Uh, Rune Factory. Wait, Rune Factory doesn't count. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo says, oh, shit. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Wow. Ghostwire Tokyo, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands are all on the same day. Oh, yep. wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the director's cut for Death Stranding that hits the PC, um, and that's it. Why they break up the release of the of the director's cut on PS5 and PC? I don't understand. Oh, never mind, never mind. I I know why. I know why. Sony likes to mac- maximize the sales, and they they do that by stretching the releases, which means Uncharted uh, Legacy of Thieves collection should be right around the corner than PC. Because uh, I'm I'm double dipping. I'm double dipping on that one. I already got it for PlayStation. Oh, you get it? I already got it for PS5, and I'm getting it for PC. Well, Ed, in your own words, good googly moogly. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, yeah. So if we look at this list right now, um, oh wait, the PS5 edition. Is, wait, oh never mind, I'm looking at the wrong. One. I do want. I will say I do want to play Ghost Rider Tokyo. That Me looks too. really good. Very interesting. So based off of this list that I'm looking at, like Triangle Strategy, that there's sixty dollars right there is coming out of my pocket. Um, then um, oh, this might be a quiet month for me. Uh, because Triangle Strategy, Ghost Rider Tokyo, so that's 120 bucks total. That's it. This is a good month for me. I know Kirby is for me. Uh, Kirby Triangle Strategy. Um, I wish I could get Grand Turismo Seven, but I really want that soundtrack. I really want to hear the music from that game um, that they have. Uh, and then Ghost Rider Tokyo. There's some indie games too that's coming out too. Now, now next yep. month. Is, next month is looking interesting. Like I might, I might come up on some money because let's oh, see, we got we got MLB the Show 22, uh, Advance Wars. Uh, wait, where was I think it? I think Advance Wars and Chrono Cross oh. is back to back. Uh, yeah, Chrono Cross is on the seventh. Advance Wars is on the eighth. Uh, Stephanie, uh, Nintendo Switch Sports is on April 29th. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, get in that. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, Vampire the Masquerade is finally is finally coming. Um. Uh oh, Mario Strikers in in June, June 10th. Uh, my birthday is June 3rd, y'all. Just saying. 
<laughs> oh, Corey's Fire Emblem Three Hopes is coming out on June 24th. I'm more excited about the other and, news uh, that I wrote about. You know what? The... <laughs> you know, you know what? It's not looking too bad yet. Xenoblade Chronicles Three is to be announced sometime in September, hopefully. Uh, Saints Row is on August 23rd. Clonello be well, July 8th. And you know what? I'm done talking about it because, like, because yeah. like, there's games that are stretching out, but you know, like, we all know the the, the calendars are going to get packed once we get into the uh, second and third quarter. Dude, and we got the first wave of the Mario Kart 8 DLC this month. So people who is it, is it is it paid DLC? Yeah, it's twenty five dollars for the whole booster pack. Well, or you said you, got... Mario, you said Mario Kart eight, so I already checked out. Well, it's right, actually but... free if you have the fan Nintendo Switch online. Switch online, yeah. yeah nobody but wants to pay people... fifty dollars for it because they took it to rip off. I don't have the game though, so it doesn't even matter. Well, you're well, part of the problem. I'm I'm with Edwin. part of the problem. Y'all, y'all Nintendo fans like make this make this rehash uh, game a hit. It's the best Mario Kart. Is it? Mm-hmm. Is yes. it? Yes. The best Mario Kart since the Super NES one? Is it? Dude, Super no, Mario I, Kart I, sucks. So I, I would say <laughs> 8 and Double Dash is like, it's a fighting thing for me. Because if I play Double Dash, I get lost in that game. Dude, everything I love everything Double before Dash. Double Dash sucks. Okay. See, I'm just not a fan. So, so yeah, there you go. Just I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Yes, even you Mario Kart 64 people. That game can just go away. I was going to say no, something I, I mean, meaner, but I'm feeling nice tonight, so I'm not. <laughs> right, Laurent? But the Mar- right. The Mario Kart <laughs> arcade game, though, is funny because if you a bitter man and you're taking a picture with Princess Peach, and that's your driver uh, avatar, it's, it's literally funny. Hey, the one for the arcade one's cool because it has like Pac-Man and like all these Namco characters in it. Yeah. Because they developed it. Man, it's I like wish Smash that would have came Anyways, <laughs> man, good times, good times. I think I'm triangle strategy, and I, man, everybody's trying to tell me I need to play Kirby. I don't know if I want to play Kirby. I really just want to play triangle strategy. Yeah. Well, remember what happened when people kept saying you should play Pokemon Arceus or Arceus? I you know. didn't end up liking it, right? I got to the town. Yeah, so just wait. <laughs> well, you, fi- what you, you guys... figure out if you want the game, and that's yeah. and that's what matters. You figure it out. You don't I don't don't bend to this peer pressure. What you got to see? Corey is into Destiny and the Wish Queen, which is from a, what a lot of people are saying it's a phenomenal. You know, Corey, you talked about it saying it's like the best campaign. It's the best and, campaign yeah. Bungie's ever done, ever, including Halo. So, just throwing that out there. Make so. a lot of hot takes tonight. Mm. Super Mario Kart so. sucks. Destiny Two, Witch Queen, best campaign. The wow. end. So, um, so I want to call something here. I meant to write an article on this, but um, but but uh, I just I just couldn't get to it in time. And this and this is this was a news thing since the twenty fourth of February. Uh, I called this though. I called that EA was going to abandon Knockout City. Yeah, there's a different developer. Uh, or is it a developer? No, or the developer is going independent. So, yeah, which means Epic will probably buy them <laughs> or something. I don't know. Epic bought Bandcamp today, by the way. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Um. Uh, yeah. What I wonder. Uh, hmm. Is it most of their, a lot of their indie game stuff like that has went independent or has stopped being with EA? Because like Sea of Solitude, when it came to Switch, it didn't have the EA name on it. Um, I think the only one that still has the EA is the guy that does that did Two Brothers and It Takes Two. I guess his company, uh, and maybe Unravel. Oh, oh EA is EA is not trying to let Haze Light Studio go. Not yet. Not until. Hayes Light Studio has to like put out put out a, a, a stinker for them before they be like, okay, we're we're ending your your free residency here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it looks like if there's a game that doesn't sell well or you know kind of face to the background, I think EA like lets them go or they break the contract or something. Because I I remember at E3 they were into doing like helping small developers bring their games out and publish them and everything and. 
I don't know what happened with that initiative. Huh. So. Cool. Cool. Anybody playing anything fun this week? I'm I'll playing. go first because my list is very short. <laughs> just occasional Arceus, just because it is a game that I can pop in for like 10 minutes while my son's like in the bath or something. And that, like, that's literally it. I'm on a strict gaming diet because I, I've said this before, I need to get my mother effing novel written. I'm at 10,000 words. Okay. Nice. I'm almost there. What qualifies as a novel? Over 25, like 20, like I know a novella is around 20,000 words. So I assume over Mm -hmm. 20,000 is a novel. So like, I'm like almost halfway to the bare minimum. I, I could be wrong with my numbers, but my publisher will allow me to do a novella even. So even if I hit 20,000 words, I'll be done. I mean, granted the pace of my story, it's going to require more than 20,000 words. But the important thing is I, I ch- scrapped my original idea. This is not about video games. I'm sorry. I started a new one, but because of that, my writer's block's gone. So my biggest obstacle is that I have a new job. Um, and lots of other competing like things that I can't skip out on. So I just write when I can. Um, and so, as soon as that's done, I'll be back into gaming, back into writing for the the pod. Um, I mean, not the pod, writing for our website. Um, and which actually has been good for my New Year's resolutions. Because remember how I broke one of mine almost immediately by getting a PS5? Yeah, like eight <laughs> days later or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's what, guys. <laughs> um, she was so happy, too. You should have seen her in the chat. Guys, I broke my New Year's resolution. Pictures. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. Um, but my other one of my other news resolution was not to like compulsively buy video games, especially if they're on sale. I actually did not buy a lot of the new heavy hitters that came out in February. That's not to say that I won't buy them in the future, but I'm actually like holding fa- fast. Like I got Sifu and that I, I stopped there and then you know, recoup some of that money. So that that's it. That's all I've been playing. Not not watching much either. Cool. Well, uh, I hope you finish it soon because uh, you deserve it. I don't know. Thanks. I don't know where I was wow. going with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week, guys. I can't help it. Okay. I know it's a long, it's been a long week. And it's only Wednesday. Look, but I'm that's just, why we're here. This is our therapy session. I know. This is like this is where we come to talk out our our non problems, our first world problems, and uh, you know. So yeah, let's so yeah, let's do a little bit more of that tonight. Yeah. You know? uh, stop. Stop killing my body. Hey, two episodes of Star Trek come on tomorrow. I'm ready. Oh man, Star Trek. Two oh, episodes. Nice. Star Trek. Star Trek Discovery is still continuing its fourth season, and Picard season two air uh, premieres tomorrow. I <gasps> yo. I'm 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 ready. I'm I'm I'm, I'm giddy. <laughs> hey, Whoopi Goldberg hey. is back as Guinan. I'm I. Yes. You to, you, hey, Laron, you, you want to... me to you want me to make you feel terrible? What? You know what I did to celebrate my return to Nintendo Power Block? What'd you do? Ed knows. Oh, he's... <laughs> I bought Doom Eternal on Switch. Wow, that's not really a bad thing, right? I don't know. I, you're just the PC guy, and I was just, I was just assuming you would be upset. I heard it runs decent though on the Switch. Yeah, it, it does. yeah, I heard it runs very good on the Switch. It does. Panic button is really good at porting. Yeah, panic button is a is a tech wizard at porting. Yeah, Nintendo Life. They did an interview with them about why like the delays and stuff took long for the Switch version, but. They did a they did a fantastic job because it's Doom and they made it run on Switch. <laughs> That's why. Hey. Man, remember how excited we were when they announced Doom and Wolfenstein and and they showed Doom, Wolfenstein, and Skyrim all at the same Nintendo Direct. Yeah, we're like, oh my god, third party support on a Nintendo console. We won. <laughs> we did it. You won. You won. Did you? Hey, it got it got them a million sales. But Bethesda was shocked. They Everybody was, just, was shocked. Was, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, and but shoot, to see, but there's a tweet about it to be like to have a, a one million players on Nintendo Switch, and I think that's that's, that's what kept Bethesda uh, supporting them until Microsoft brought them. So it's true, man. My beverage is almost gone. It's 
darn meeting. I had to drink during the meeting. Uh, yeah. So, Laron, what, are you playing anything fun? Are you doing anything? Uh, besides Mass Effect, Monster Hunter, and uh, uh, well, I had I just finished Uncharted Four on the um for the uh for the Legacy of Thieves collection. Yeah, how was that? Nice. <clears throat> okay, that ending. That ending got me. Yeah. That ending, ending got me. Yes, that, that man. The game you know is about it's ten fun. hours too long, but the ending is amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is the one thing I will say. The game is the game is on the long. Like it was rather long in the tooth, and I thought Uncharted Three was long. Man, Uncharted Four was like, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna like drain you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but that ending with 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 his daughter. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Look. <laughs> Look, y'all had y'all chance to play this game back when it first came out. Was it what year was it out? 2015? 17? 16? I don't remember. It was out a while ago. Uh, by, by the way, I've had the like I've had like a real big It released in May of 16. Inkling to okay. just play through the Uncharted games again and I don't have a way to play through them. So, oops. I go. told you, man. I, I can I can pack up my my PS4 and and ship it to you, man. No, it's no, no big deal. Like all it's doing is collecting dust in here. Like uh, I have this I have this bad habit now. Like when when uh, a, when an old system when when an old system gets gets replaced by the by the fresh new hotness, I don't really go back to it. Like the only the only exception is my modded PS1 and PS PS2. Those are the only exceptions. Yeah. Like I like I ran I ran my I'm surprised my PS2 my modded PS2 still turns on because I ran that fucker into the ground like, <laughs> like shit with all those beat mania and all those music games Ooh. and all that stuff and and Dance Dance Revolution and, and then like 18 games of beat mania and and, <laughs> and, 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 and unreleased games never came out here out in the states or like complete editions of games like Front Mission Four Complete Mission oh my god yeah yeah like that bad boy overheated wow. 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 So just Mass Effect and Monster Hunter then? Uh, Mass Effect, Monster Hunter, and yeah. No, and I plan to start the um the Uncharted Lost Legacy probably this weekend. If uh, yes. you know, uh, yeah. But um, but honestly, like I just real I just realized I think yeah. You, when we were wrapping up Crossroads last night, I just realized I had God of War installed on my computer. Uh, so I need to so I need to sit down. Should I have God of War and Final Fantasy uh, Seven? <laughs> on my computer right now and, uh, oh wow and all i did was turn on turn on long enough just to, uh just to see the uh the opening for final fantasy 7 which okay square y'all 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 did kind of a shoddy port like there's no <laughs> there's no expanded menu to like access like you know access like the expanded stuff like i can't i have a rtx 2080 uh ti and, and this I, is the and remake I one. and i can't and i can't i can't access dlss and you know like overclock the game and all this stuff you know y'all did a bad job on this you know and the one thing, and the one thing I do, the one thing I definitely don't forgive companies for is when they do shoddy ass ports of console games. I, 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 I can't stand it because it's like number one, you all release the game, you know, like X amount of years after the the console version's out, and you can't get it right. Come on, guys. This, this is the remake, right? Final Fantasy. Yeah, remake. Final Fantasy remake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, it's it's one thing. Like I don't even know, but well, I know that I know that uh, I know that God of War does support all the higher functions of uh of of the Nvidia graphic, or the RTX graphics cards, and the AMD uh and the AMD uh, uh, graphics cards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't seen it all yet. Um and um and well, here's what I know: Sony actually puts the work in on on their games when they come to PC. Like every game has had every game has had a benefit, starting with Horizon. And going and just going up all the way through the Death Stranding, even um even uh Days Gone had had like expansions and stuff like that, and um so I'm pretty sure like Uncharted is gonna get it, and you know like uh you heard it here first, Spider Man is coming to PC. I just don't know when the announcement is happening. <laughs> Question, LeBron, who does the PC versions of Sony games? Like, is it like? Well, it's probably uh, Nixus, right? Because they bought them. That would make the most sense. Uh, let's let's see, God of. Uh, I know Gorilla did the port for for uh for, Horizon for, for, and I actually think Sony Santa yeah. Monica did the port for God of War. And I do oh, know so Kojima did. did the port for for Death Stranding. Yeah, and I know that that Days Gone was done internally at Bend. So I guess the teams are doing them internally, I guess is the short answer to that. Okay. Whoops. Cause yeah, cause I didn't. I always wondered who was doing their PC versions of those games mm -hmm. uh, when they come out. 
Okay, the Microsoft Win Windows version of God of War was ported by Jetpack Interactive. Okay, well then, maybe not. And Jetpack Interactive, they're, resp they're responsible for their Canadian studio. Canada! Canada. And Sony's doing the Steam versions, I'm assuming. Well, I mean, those uh, probably count as the Windows version, right? Let's see. Let's see. Our clients. Uh, Orcs Must Die, Project X, Unbound, Plants vs. Zombie Garden Warfare, NBA Live 16, Dark Souls, Live 15, Live 14. This doesn't have a lot on their website. I guess I have to, like, dig into it. Um, yeah. So, damn. Um, they haven't updated their page to say they did God of War. I mean, that's that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Hmm. That might be a Sony thing. Nintendo God of, does that a okay, lot. Okay, God of War introduces Jetpack Interactive as the lead uh, as lead developer. Woof, woof, woof. Just okay. Well, all I know is all I know is based on based on like the coverage and stuff that I've seen of it. Like like they're mm -hmm. saying, like a lot of people are saying the PC version is pretty damn good. So I probably I probably jump on it this weekend. As a matter of fact, that might be in my what are we playing uh, segment for uh, for this for going going live this Saturday morning. Ah, uh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, Ed, that's all, that's all. Oh, I I think I I think I've officially retired from playing Teppin. No, you haven't. I saw you playing today. I was Discord. just the new the new the new pack. Just oh oh, Discord tells on me. Like it tells. It does. Me, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I was yeah. Like I was um. I just the new the new pack just the new the new card pack just dropped. So I just I just logged on just to see what was new. But um. But I haven't really put any real time into it. Like not uh -huh. not this not this season this campaign I'm I think I'm done because uh because I don't know like uh, something something changed well uh is I it losing say, the steam it's not losing the steam no trust me it's not losing the steam it's is losing it's, it's losing its luster with me though because um because because here's the thing about it like um when Teppin first came out like two years ago because uh they just they just had their two point five event which means their two year and a half year anniversary mm -hmm. if that's if that's even a thing um but um. But yeah, like um, like I want to say like maybe six updates ago, like they started releasing this thing. They start, okay when the game first came out, uh, just like any card game, you had you had you had high high ranking cards. In this game, they call them legendaries. Like every 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 game pack, I want to say had like ten legendaries. Ten might be a stretch. It might be anywhere from eight to ten legendaries, right? Um, and you could get those just from, you know, just from using your in, you can use in game currency or you can spend your own money, you know, via microtransactions, you know, start getting card packs and stuff like that. Uh, but then, but then somewhere about, somewhere about, um, I want to say back in, back in, maybe back October or something, they started releasing what's called supplemental cards and supplemental cards are cards that you actually have to like, you actually have to like spend it. You can't just spend a certain type of in-game currency for it, and you can't buy them through microtransactions, which means you have to put in more work. And it was basically padding the game time because, like, they added a new mode of, of gameplay into the game, and mm -hmm. it split the it split the player player base because some people played that mode exclusively, while other people played the rank mode. Like, I played the rank mode, um, and so and so, but they would drop they would drop one legendary. In those supplemental cards for each for each class, and there's four different classes of there's four different class types of uh, of, of of the of heroes that you have in the game. So you drop one, and those things cost 3,200 3, of the in-game currency. It's not bad, but honestly, it just pads more playtime. And and honestly, like you have people who, for lack of a better word, we call them whales. They basically just drop that money, you know, stuff like that. So what they'll do, because you use what's called souls as the currency to buy this mm -hmm. stuff. What they'll do is they'll just drop a whole bunch of money in the game to get card packs. They'll open the card packs, convert all their extra cards because every because every deck you you can only use three of you only use three of like basic cards and um and you only use one legendary per per deck. So um so yeah so everything else is just extras. So you can you can turn those in and just sh and shop them in for souls and stuff like that. Uh but um but with Teppin uh but with this. All whales do is like they drop real money, you know, into the microtransactions, open a whole bunch of cards up, and then turn in their extras for all these all these souls and stuff, and then they just buy the supplemental cards without doing the work. 
Wow. Which, which, you know, which that's the nature of the beast with these type of games, to be honest with you. But, you know, honestly, like I was like, I make, I, I basically make champion, you know, every, every season that I play in, you know, and it's not hard. You just got to go through, you just got, you just got to do your grind and you get the champion. Like you must go get the champion. Like when the new card pack drops and the new season starts, must go get champion within the first two or three days. Some people get day one, which, which is crazy to me, which means they're the ones, they're the, they're the ones spending money, but you know. Um, but I usually, I usually get champion, you know, like, you know, like before, like the first time period, you know, ends uh, and stuff like that. So it's not really a big deal for me, but I was starting to get trounced by these people who just had these early ass supplemental cards. And I was like, man, fuck this shit. You know, <laughs> like the, it, when the game stops being fun, like Ubisoft games, for example, when they stop being fun, that's when I stop playing. <laughs> when, when the fun turns into work. Is it, no, no, no. I don't mind work because God. I mean, shit, oh no, like, I'm talking about the like, Ubisoft games. <laughs> like, like, like. Oh, okay, yeah, because like those, like old ass Monster Hunter games back from 2004 and stuff. Like, shit. Like, like those were work, but they were fun. Yeah, that's funny. Dude, my yeah, fun games so, are still fun when you work. <clears throat> so that's the so that's that's the news. That's the news on everything I've been doing or not doing. You know, because uh, like I said, I did. I think I'm officially retiring from Teppin. I don't know if I'm uninstalling it from my tablet just yet, but I'm 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 slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not logging in anymore for the dailies, so that should tell you something right there. It's hmm. fair. Ed, what are you playing? Anything? Um, uh, started up uh, Voice of Cars, the Forsaken Maiden. Uh, really enjoying that. Uh, um, it's a different narrator than the first game, and. Um, it's very weird when you hear Stephanie, if you decide to play it and you like, this is kind of like the second game, but it's not a sequel, like a direct sequel. If you hear the narrator in the first game and the second one, when you hear the second one, he literally sounds like the voice for the Nintendo directs. Really? Yes. I'm like, do you have a second job? <laughs> I'm like, this is the director for the Nintendo Direct. They literally sound the same, um, but it's great gameplay. I can't wait to get more to the story. Uh, with it, uh, playing Horizon Forsaken West, uh, really enjoying it. It, it. Thank God for this game because uh-huh. it literally made me not want to play Dying Light Two. Like oh, wow. I, I really don't want to go back to Dying Light Two. I, I might go back later on in the year to finish it, but Horizon Forbidden West is is a great game. It's, it's. Didn't meet my expectations for anything. Of it, you know, it was one of my anticipated games. But I think when I got into it and I started doing it, it start the familiarity of the first game start kicking in, which is not a bad thing. Um, and I am enjoying that game because I will put three hours into it, searching everywhere, getting past the stories, and I really love the villains in this game. Um, it's going to take a weird turn, and I don't want to spoil it. But let's just say it kind of gets very DC with it. And I'm talking about 80s DC with a certain superhero, and it's the second movie. Hmm. So, um, I'm Batman. But it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but it, it really is a great game. I could see it getting some uh, Game of the Year nominations for PlayStation. Uh, but yeah, I'm. That's uh, that's what I'm. I've been playing. Uh, really enjoying that. I um, haven't really put much into a lot of gaming just yet, uh, because I'm going to be doing some writing. But I am going to be jumping into a lot of games next week, um, for it. Cool. Uh, right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, nothing new for me. I've just been playing uh, Destiny Two. Uh, the Witch Queen, which is, uh, you know, obviously it's going to be taking up a lot of my time for a little bit. Uh, it's it, The campaign is really fun. Uh, I ran through it with my friend uh, this past weekend. We were <laughs> we were up till like two o'clock in the morning <laughs> trying to fight the, <laughs> the last uh, encounter in the main campaign. And then uh, and then it didn't register that he finished it. So we had to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So that was that was fun. But. I'm doing the, uh, there's a weapon now that I'm chasing and it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a grenade launcher and it has, uh, well, this is going to sound weird to non-Destiny players, but it, it, it's a grenade launcher with a worm in it. And instead uh. of, <laughs> and instead of, uh, 
grenade instead of like an ammo counter it has a heartbeat so when it flatlines like, you are it out sounds of like, ammo it sounds like an insomnia game from like resistance <laughs> or something i mean it's it is cool the explosions are cool so uh, uh but i've also been playing xenoblade chronicles definitive edition uh, yes. about three hours in and uh i haven't played it since it came to wii and i've had it for like a year and I was I was gonna start with two, and I played a little bit of two, but then I was like, I should probably just play one first and just play them in order, you know. And uh, I know that Xenoblade Chronicles One, the Switch version, has that epilogue that kind of ties both games together, mm-hmm. and it's like a it's like a Star Wars situation where they technically want you to play two first and then go back to one, but uh, nah, we're just gonna play them in order. <laughs> I know this summer a lot of people said they're going to be jumping into that series to get ready for three in September. Well, that's why I'm starting in February, Ed. <laughs> because maybe by summer I'll beat one of them. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of... Oh, I also fell into... I I like... After we recorded Crossroads last night, I got in like this weird headspace to where like I just couldn't fall asleep and I couldn't... I just kept like... You know, sometimes when you are overly tired, you just start thinking about everything in your life and like, oh my gosh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. So I, I laid, I laid on, I went out to the couch and I laid on the couch and I played Tetris Effect for like an hour. Just put the headphones in, just played some Tetris, listened to the music, and I was, then I fell asleep and my Switch was uncharged on my chest when I woke up. Oh no. So <laughs> but, game that I still need to get. Oh man, oh, Tetris oh, Effect is so good. I've been playing it. I got it on Switch. Why is my switch on? Stop it. Speaking of uncharged. Uh I got it on Switch. It's on Game Pass. But I got it on Switch because it's Tetris and Tetris belongs on a Nintendo console, let's be honest. Nintendo handheld to be exact. I, I can agree with that statement. I, I can agree with that. So, so what were you going to say, uh, Dora? Oh, I was I wanted to thank Corey for that for that wonderful update that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is coming to Game Pass because I almost I almost cracked and bought that game. Mm-hmm. It's coming to PC Game Pass too, which is <laughs> Ooh, surprising. Yes. yes. So. Yeah, I am so mad. This is like, why, <laughs> why do I bother buying these stupid games? No, no, no. no because no, you want to support the developer so they make a sequel. Stephanie, yes. just like just like the Pal Block crew has told me, like keep buying the they told me to keep buying the Nintendo games so they go on sale. Keep buying these <laughs> these these AAA titles so they come to Game Pass. Well, well was, here's <laughs> here's my theory, and Ed, we were kind of talking about this earlier. Yeah. When I called you earlier, and we were talking while I was driving home, is like I still think Microsoft is going to buy Square Enix's Western division. They're literally working with Crystal Dynamics right now on Perfect Dark. Crystal Di- Square Enix is renting Crystal Dynamics to Microsoft to make Perfect Dark with the initiative. Mm-hmm. They are making all these great deals to get all of Square Enix's Western games on Game Pass, right? Deus Ex, Avengers, Tomb Raider was on there for a long time, which the ru- there's a rumor that the entire trilogy is coming back now, Xbox Series X Enhanced. Is that the uh, Guardians, the one trilogy, the one trilogy collection that they release? The, the or... trilogy, yeah. Well, it's because of separate games. Well, but they, then they're, they're all that separate games. Stuff. They're all sep- They're all. You can buy them all, but they're all still separate games. Anyways, doesn't matter. I still think Microsoft is going to buy school, uh, the Western Division. They're going to get Tomb Raider, which will fill their third-person action adventure thing, right? Because they need mm-hmm. something to challenge Uncharted when it comes back. No, I get it. The story in Uncharted is way better. I get it. Tomb Raider is a superior playing game. They it's got superior that, puzzles. They use that fucking uh, Indiana Jones game to make the impression. I know, but Wolf and, or, uh, Machine Games won't show it off yet. It's upsetting me. You think E3? I don't know. E3 doesn't exist anymore, Ed. Well, with the, with Jeff Keighley's thing, I should say. I don't. Well, Microsoft's holding their own thing in June. I, we already know that, I think, because EA EA Play is holding their thing in May because they're supposedly revealing the new Star Wars game at that 
thing. Uh-huh. And uh, so EA Play is in May, and then the Xbox thing is in June. And then the Nintendo Direct will probably be that Tuesday, Tuesday. after the Microsoft thing, because that's when it always is. Ubisoft and West Square Enix is probably going to show their own, uh, I mean, like last year. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends, because Sony will probably have a state of play to show off Final Fantasy 16 and uh, when's Forspoken supposed to come out? Isn't that supposed to come out soon? I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah, game. There's, there's no definitive date on that. Like, yeah, I didn't see it on that list that I read. I swear. So, Lerat, they've been because they've been advertising that a lot for Forspoken. Uh, for uh, they've been advertising, yes, but uh, but I but, May twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. Okay. Oh they'll, wait. They'll probably do a state of play around then. I'm sure. Uh huh. Well, there's a state of play coming next. There's a state of play coming this month, uh, according to rumors. Mm. And Square Enix is normally they do their own direct style this month too, so they may show it this month. Uh, because uh, Final Fantasy Origins come out this month also. Oh yeah, I that forgot Stranger be... of Paradise is coming. I forgot that that game even existed. <laughs> yeah, so that may be the highlight. So we'll see. Um, but yeah. But... Yeah, but with Crystal Dynamics, when me and Corey was talking, I'm just like, that would really make Microsoft strong. Like, their library I mean, games and stuff, they would be really strong with that. I mean, what what we were talking about is, like, I would rather them take... And no offense to, like, Activision and stuff, but I feel like... I feel like with what Xbox needs in terms of, of games, like, they need the third-person action-adventure game, which is what mm-hmm. Sony excels at. If you get that, you get... You get Tomb Raider and Legacy of Kane, which everybody wants a Legacy of Kane com- game to come back. Yeah. So like you get you fill that gap, and then you get Deus Ex, which totally fits in with like what you're doing with Dishonored and Deathloop and uh, you know whatever else they're doing over there. Hang on a second. Okay, speaking of Forspoken, like news broke this morning from uh, from from ComicBook.com that Forspoken uh-huh. has reportedly been delayed. Wait, what's really? Called? Forspoken. Huh. Yeah. Uh, that's comicbook.com, though. No, 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 no. They, no, they, I feel like, okay. I, I don't want to, I don't want to make this sound bad, but I, I trust them more than I trust Game Rant. Hmm. I mean, I, I don't really trust anybody at this point. Everybody's just like, everybody says whatever they want. I'm assuming it's probably been delayed to the holiday then, the fall. Nah, Zelda's Square coming to PlayStation. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Square Square can't take that chance. Uh uh of of like of like having like of having like Final Fantasy coming out coming out like around Christmas, you know, because like because I guarantee you a lot of other companies are padding their release dates for like the end of the year. Well, I mean, like if for spoken has been delayed, it's I think close to holiday because Square is kind of stacked. Already, and you know, with Chrono Cross, Live Alive, Square's, uh, Square's got their hands in everything. Like when when I heard about them front mission games, I was like, oh my Jesus! Yeah, <laughs> and, and see, and I think because a lot of that that we know is coming to Nintendo, I think Square is kind of covered for the summer. And I don't know if they have any the chuckle ball racing also this month. I don't know what they have planned for the holiday. Like for for like big releases or anything, and right now it's, it is Final Fantasy uh, Origins and Forspoken, and maybe something about Final Fantasy Sixteen, but that's highly like, you know, who knows what what that's gonna be. Oh, and uh, God, not God, is it Godfall, the one that they're doing with Platinum Games? Babylon's Fall. That's Babylon's right. Fall. That's, Babylon's Fall. They look wait, they that, look identical tomorrow. and equally that's tomorrow. bad. <laughs> Yeah, that's coming out to. Is that tomorrow already? Uh, I believe it's tomorrow. Hold oh on, my gosh. I did. I did write the notable Thursday. Games. I did write the noble games list for that. Hold on. Is that that's we talked about this on Crossroads last night, Ron? Right? Like yeah, like, yeah. I, I was listening to Giant Bombcast today, and they, uh, Jeff Gersman, he said that he has never been so underwhelmed by the first impression of a sixty dollar game video game in his life. Yeah, Babylon's Babylon's Falls tomorrow with uh, Ghost Ghost Runner Project Hell. Yeah. So it's on a Thursday that oh, the release. Man, this this game yeah. this game to survive it needs to be a PlayStation Plus or Game Pass or what, Spartacus game or whatever the heck they're calling this thing. This I game, wonder. I, you know, I, I don't know. PlayStation Plus can't can't save all the games though. That's the problem because look at uh, Destruction All Stars. Um, no, you're right. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, shit. Like, you well, know, like. Destruction All Stars is going free to play, but that studio has also been taken off the Twisted Metal reboot. Which, by the way, yeah. Leon, we didn't talk about that last night on Crossroads. What's that? The Twisted Metal show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got picked up by who? Paramount Plus? Uh, is it, yeah, I believe it's Paramount Plus. Mm hmm. Oh, they were they're doing starring one? Anthony Mackie. Yeah, Anthony Mackie. Mackie's in it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even know they announced that. Yeah. I meant to. I meant to write an article on that, but I just got swamped with, with stuff. Like as w once we get once we get into the week, like it's hard for me to like write consistently during the week. Like I'm better on the weekends than I am on the, mm -hmm. in the weekdays. Weekdays. Was it a uh, PlayStation blog that they announced it? No. Uh, I got I got uh, it from Push Square. I got it from Variety. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I got. Yeah. I got it from I Push to, Square. I need to follow Push Square. Um, you do. I know they're just yeah. Yo, they are they that are, whole network, they are like PlayStation they're like PlayStation junkies. So, Dude, that, yeah, that whole push, network, uh it's Push Square, Pure Xbox, and Nintendo Life are like life, the, they're yeah. the first sites I go to. And like yeah, I, I and like the, follow my favorite thing about them is like if they don't report on the story themselves, they have their source right at the bottom of the story like we do on our website. Mm -hmm. It's like it's so nice. It's they they're the first place I go. I haven't I don't even remember the last time I went to IGN, I'm gonna be honest with you. Or... Yeah, yeah. IGN is too flashy. Sorry, Stephanie's so off push... the quiet on this episode. <laughs> what? I'm listening. Stephanie, Stephanie, <laughs> wants, Stephanie wants to actually break into the topics. That's that's no, what I'm... no, that's not. I'm just. I'm hey, just Corey, listening. what's the Xbox one? Pure Xbox, P U R E Xbox. Okay. It's really good. That's where like oh, most I, of my oh, new I stories. To, I guess we need to start checking that out since uh. Since uh, PlayStation is a uh, Crossroads is doing a thing. Oh yeah, I forgot. Okay. We should probably talk about that, huh? Before we talk about things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I kind of talked about it on Crossroads last night, but uh, so just so everybody knows, I know a lot of people who listen to this show listen to Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast. Uh, we're putting that on hiatus for a little while, uh, just because we a are stretching ourselves thin and b. Uh, we feel like our, 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 I don't know, lack of better word, talents and efforts can be, uh, useful elsewhere. And so, uh, plus it opens up the weekend and, uh, you know, a combination of things, right? Like the show had multiple panels over the last year and a half and multiple hosts and new panelists and old panelists. And, you know, uh, we just decided to, put it on hiatus until we can have like a dedicated Xbox team to maybe do it at some point. So, uh, I am returning to Nintendo power block, which most of you probably have already heard, uh, to what, what? drive that ship with Ed and Yay. Jacob and Dan and, uh, Stoy is moving over to crossroads with Leron and Leron has graciously, uh, accepted some of the Xbox responsibility until, you know, we do something. So, yeah, Crossroads is going to be a completely blended show. Sorry, no Nintendo content, though. Nah, that's fine. You guys will just yeah. make fun of us the whole time anyway. Yeah, point, I've been there. point and laugh, point and laugh. Mm -hmm. I can already hear you, see... Austin, and Stoy, po like, pointing and laughing at, you know. It did. They should see all the numbers of Nintendo making that coin. <laughs> Nintendo makes Nintendo makes nice coin, but they don't dominate in the West. <laughs> uh, it's fine. So just to, like, just to like give everybody around. a little update, uh, <laughs> if you want to, you know, get some Xbox content, uh, you can find it there. Or, you know, Ed and I kind of just dis discussed uh, doing a non-Tendo topic on uh, Expansion Pass, which is uh, the supplemental show we're doing uh, for Nintendo Power Block on Sundays. So, yeah, there's going to be some schedule shifting. Um, you can just follow us on Twitter and to, to you know, figure that out. But... <laughs> You know, for the most part, I don't. I just don't want to sit here and rant about it all night. I just wanted to let everybody know that some things that are changing, and uh, if you want Xbox content, you should follow the Ron. Yep, you it's, should do that. Or the yeah, website. It's not like it's not like Xbox is like any less. I don't know, important to us, mm -hmm. or it, it's you know being minimized. It's just things are being shifted around to maximize. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. quality yeah. quality yeah. over quantity, guys. Right. Yeah. 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 Cross well, over the to the. Thing... The one thing I the one thing I believed in, and you know, like I'm, I still feel like a new, the new guy here, even oh though I've gosh. been around. You've been here for like a year and a half, dude. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. 
but the uh, but the one thing but the one thing I believe in, you know, as far as us being like the uh, you know a, a games network, we when I joined up, it was Boss Rush Games, you know. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I've always felt like is that we should we should definitely represent, if not equally, we should have representation for the major platforms, you know. I you know I know we I know we joke about like certain platforms like Google Stadia, for example, and you know um and you know stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, like at least we actually bring coverage for that stuff, and you know we yes. have. We have three major platforms, to, you know, specifically, like, which is which is which is Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. So we should always have representation for that going on. And I think the and honestly, the uh, it's not even I think like the major reason why like you know, Arsenal X is going through its changes right now is just is just it's not even it's not even a consistency thing. It's just that you know like we have not been able to structure a dedicated crew for that. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, and and, and yeah. that's the and that's the major reason for people that really want to know what's going on with Arsenal X. We just have not been able to get like a de- a dedicated a dedicated crew that you know can curate content, you know, and be on there. You know, like the shows don't have to be weekly. That's the cool thing. Like you know, like it could actually shift to a bi-weekly show. You know, it, but you mm-hmm. know that might make it a long format podcast depending on what content you want to put out there and stuff like that. But um, but ultimately, you know, like yeah. A lot of a lot of us creatives right now at Boss Rush, we have our hands in so much stuff that you know, like you know, it it, it gets like it becomes paper thin sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. for what we can and cannot do for, for the network and stuff like that. So you know, yeah, yeah. it's and- easier. It's easier for like a new show like like mine, Crossroads. Even though like we're predominantly PlayStation people, people have seen since episode one. I talk about PC content on the show, so like Xbox basically is extension of the PC family. So come on aboard, yeah. you know. Yeah, and. Uh- I mean, so from here on out, we're kind of going to run with like a f- four pillar shows, which would be Boss Rush Podcast, Nintendo Power Block, Crossroads, and Standard Def. And then each show is going to have like a supplemental show for our Patreon. So, you know, After Dark, uh, Expansion Pass, uh, what's the other one? Crossroads P- Plus, which I think, Leron, we talked about a little bit. Yep. And then, uh, you know, standard def will be standard def. And then, you know, we're still going to have interviews. Uh, it's not going to be like a weekly thing anymore, right? We're just going to put them up as we have them. Uh, Celeste and I talked about it, and you and I talked about it. And then uh, Talk the Walk uh, is something I know a lot of people have been requesting to come back, which it's coming back, but we want to make sure Celeste is a part of that when she's good yes. and ready. Also. Yes, because the... We're we're all getting ready for that fire watch discussion. Yeah. And yes. Man, just uh, that's gonna be a really good one step. Well, I might ask to be included on that because I bought the I bought the Switch version not too long ago. What? No kidding. Ooh. Wow. Laurent playing surprise. a walking simulator on Switch. What Switch. is this? Who is this guy? Hey, that's that's kind of like the home for it. I mean, it's I. Def- <laughs> Stephanie, we may have to do a two parter because a lot of people want to be on fire watch. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's kind of what's going on, you know. I know we haven't had an Arsenal X in about two or three weeks, but that's that's why. It was a hard decision, trust me. You know what? But you know, you know what? Uh, not, I'm not even shifting topics on this, but you know what? I think a cool thing should be like, you know, Corey, you and I discussed this like way back in January, so I, I so you may or may not remember it. Uh, I really want I really want the crews to like do a takeover show, like Pow Block. Pow Block does a, a Crossroads episode. Uh, Crossroads does a Pow Block episode, you know. And hell, like, we can find a blended team and do an honorary uh, Arsenal X episode for, for like, a week, you know. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, oh, we're not, oh, but the three of us, we're not relinquishing Boss Rush. We're not, we're not. <laughs> y'all, y'all can't take over this show. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Crossroads no. here. No. Oh, my yeah, God. I would, yeah. Nope. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, because you know, Austin, you know, Austin and I are just gonna sit back with, with our with our hands fold, our arms folded, and we're gonna be like, okay, okay, yep, okay, yep. He's getting he's getting a, he's getting a major thumping. We are with back the, with in the building. <laughs> Everybody, give it up for the PC Muscle Race himself, Mister LeBron Dawkins. What else, good sir? <laughs> <laughs> don't try, don't try and fluff me. Don't don't try that. <laughs> and we also got the Doc who can rock the one, the only play Austin, Mister Austin Campbell. <laughs> Yeah, he's got that down. No, 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 no. When we say when we say takeover, that means that means like everybody that's on one show is on that on the on the opposite show, and the people on the on the opposite show are on the other show. 
That's what we mean. There, oh. uh, yeah, Ed, you won't you you won't be on Pal Block at all that week. <laughs> ah, just like be... I won't be on Crossroads that week. <laughs> ah, okay. But I think I well, think in, I think in the spirit of fairness, though, we might want to do that as like expansion pass, Crossroads Plus, and you know whatnot. You yeah. know, just so we don't confuse the audience. Huh. Would I be, would I would I be hosting it or someone else or like whoever, wants, whoever, whoever wants whoever wants to host. Oh, see, that's why I was doing it because I I was no 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 thinking no no no, 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 no. no when I when I say a takeover I mean you Corey Dan and uh and uh who's your fourth who's your fourth I, I miss oh Jacob, Jacob y'all yeah. y'all are the four people on Crossroads ah that week. gotcha me, okay Austin Stoy and Chris we're all on we're all Power block. block that week okay. I thought the whole yeah. Was when, I say, when I say when I say when I say takeover, I mean I mean like I mean like we shake this thing up. We have the the PlayStation crew talking about Nintendo, you know, for a week's episode. You know, Nintendo is talking about PlayStation for a week's episode, and we have a hodgepodge of people like doing honorary like you know like like uh, Arsenal X episode talking about play uh, Xbox stuff. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Now, oh, okay. Now we we gotta make it we gotta make it fun and quirky though. That's what I'm saying. It's probably so we, should be it's so probably we, should be so a bonus switch. content. It's probably should be a bonus content show. So we not, shows. Yeah, we could okay. we could do that for like a crossroads plus or an expansion pass episode, right? Yeah. Where yeah, you know, the takeover. Yeah. And make and make it fun, but also don't alienate the audience. Right. <laughs> oh no. I'm, so yeah, so yeah, so you know, my opinion I, itself can't be hosting the Nintendo show and then like slamming Nintendo, you know, <laughs> you know, to the depths of Atlantis, you know. Uh, I, you know, I still gotta go find some PlayStation gear. I need, I need to, I might have to order one of their PlayStation hats, because uh, I want one of those uh, hats, and I can't find them anywhere. I want can't the, find I want, no PlayStation gear. I want the, I want the sparkly PlayStation shirt. You, you should you get the Crossroads. That too, yeah. As a matter of fact, we need to support our own merch. We need to do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I would love to have a Crossroad, cross, Crossroad hoodie. Oh, buy one. They're available, Ed. I, I know. I know. Oh. Bossers.net uh, slash store, maybe. Are we, for, are, are we forsaking the housekeeping tonight so we just get ready yeah, to the I don't. I don't care about housekeeping. Let's be honest. Yeah, I know where to find a show. Yeah. Come on. If, you don't, if you're already here, you're already here. Okay? You found us. Hello. Right. We'll see y'all Monday if you missed it. No, I mean, the plan is to, like, pre-record it. I wanted to do that last week, but I just didn't because I was enjoying some time off. Uh but yeah, the plan is just to pre-record all that crap and put it at the either the beginning or the end. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm really excited for the for expansion pass though. Ed and I have been kind of planning some things for that, and it's gonna be a good time. Yes. Uh, are there any topics? Has anybody got a topic? I mean, Stephanie. Stephanie had well, the yeah. open topic. Um, I wanted to bring this up, and I just think Ed is a great fourth for this one. Um, so because, El you know, well, first uh, Horizon Forbidden West release, like a, a big game of the year contender, and then Elden Ring, which won most anticipated game for like two years in a row and got like a bajillion 10 out of 10s, which I don't know why that, that irks me. Um, I've never played it, so I'm not saying anything bad about it. But I've had a... A, a best friend of mine who played literally 20 minutes of it and and he's like i'm not playing this again and it's not because he can't you know he needs to get good he's one of the best gamers out like that i know like he's really good at gaming um and he's played souls games before he just didn't like it i'd have to look at what his criticisms are on my my phone but also i was listening to exp cast and they said it was a good game but it's basically they're just admitting it's not perfect like all these scores are so mm -hmm. we could talk a little bit about elden ring but i guess my pro but that makes me think of the topic of what exactly constitutes as a quote-unquote perfect game or a 10 out of 10 game i'm just curious i mean i think a, a 10 out of 10 and a perfect game are two different things because yeah. like 10 out of 10 in a lot of places means masterpiece it doesn't mean perfect right yeah and mm -hmm. so like so for elden ring for example I know a lot of outlets that reviewed it have their from software guy, right? Or lady, right? Like they love from software games and they're the ones that review all these games, right? Like Dan Tackett, Game Informer is a great example. He loves those mm -hmm. games and 
his perspective was I, uh, you know, he gave Bloodborne like a nine two five, and he gave Dark Souls three like a nine. You know, like he's he's like their from guy. And when I was listening to the Game Informer show the other day, he said that Elden Ring is the best Souls type game that From has ever made, right? And then they they opened it up into this open world, and they did so many unique things within the open world. You know, that's why he gave it a ten because it is the best version of that type of game. And uh, you know, I I respect that decision. I also listened to the Min Max show, which had a, which has a lot of the same opinions that EXP had, right? They said, yeah, it's a very good one of those. I don't like those games, so this game's not for me. And that's all I needed to hear to like not even worry about it. I've played enough Dark Souls and Bloodborne to know that I don't care for those games, you know? Maybe one day if it's on sale, right, like Dark, so- Dark Souls 3 goes on sale every other week for like 12 bucks, right? Maybe if it's on sale, I'll check it out. You know, I'll I'll pay 20, 30 bucks for it and check it out. But like I know that I don't really care about Dark Souls games. So I don't I'm not gonna worry about Elden Ring. Well, so here's the thing, like maybe maybe it's because I'm not the most hardcore gamer, but from like an outsider's point of view, I don't know why I just called myself an outsider. When I see ten out of ten, my in my mind that is perfect. So like I just I'm, I mean a lot of time to- I mean that's I we're all trained to think that though right I mean like a hundred percent is perfect right when you when you grow up and people are grading your papers in in school and stuff right a hundred percent or a ten out of ten or a twenty out of twenty that's a perfect score right and we're all kind of mm-hmm. trained that way but I feel like that doesn't do anybody any favors when we get to real life uh, not that like looking at game reviews is real life or anything, but you know what I mean? Like it just, I look at the last of us, for example, right? I realize that that is a game that everybody loves and it tells a, especially at the time, a pretty unique story for games. And a lot of people gave it a 10 out of 10. I don't like that game like at all. And, and it's just like, it's just, you know, a game, not for me. I don't think it plays well. I don't think the shooting is, is, is great. Just like a lot of Naughty Dog games, the shooting isn't great. The cover system is kind of weird. The half-assed detective system from Batman is kind of weird until you upgrade it, right? It's just it's just not a game for me, right? So I, it's all an opinion, you know. That's that's all I really can say is just like these perfect scores that this game is getting is like it's great, but a lot of people who are reviewing them are people who love those games and have a passion for those games and like those are like the only games they play right it's like the people who play skyrim for five years and don't play anything else right uh from soft is, has that kind of following and uh which is good because you want those people reviewing this game but mm-hmm. also i feel like you should have people that don't play them maybe give like a second opinion this is why this is kind of why i stress the uh the 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 idea for objectivity when people review games you know you know like don't you know like yeah if you're a hardcore i'm a hardcore fan of monster hunter but you guys have seen you guys have seen literally how i've ripped like monster hunter rise to shreds and it's not just because it was on nintendo no because like even the pc version even the pc version has problems and you know thanks to the pc community and, and mods and stuff we've actually fixed some of the things that are wrong like like i mean like I mean, like, for example, like, Monster and Rise on a PC has built-in HDR upscaling and all this stuff. You know, it takes advantage of, like, the hardware and stuff like that. Modders still took it a step further, and they and they basically enhanced, like, the HD and the gra- and HDR and the graphics, uh, the graphic fidelity of the game. Like, it looks like a different beast, you know, stuff like that. And it's crazy because Capcom put this work into the PC version to give us modes that were not – that are not available on the Switch right now as far as graphical fidelity and stuff like that. There's mm-hmm. a filter. There's a filter on, on – um, on the PC version of Monster Hunter Rise, it's built into the it's built into the options of the game. So it's not like it's not like it's something hidden that you have to go dig or mod in. There's a there's a couple of filters in there. You can have a filter to make Monster Hunter Rise look like the old Kurosawa movies and stuff like that, you know. And modders went and took it to a whole other level and stuff like that. So yeah, um, but yeah, I feel like you know like people, even if you are the most avid fanboy of that franchise you should still you know have objectivity in what you review and stuff like that you know yeah have your joygasm you know have a literal joygasm put it in words so people understand you're enjoying the game but also you know 
like my Metroid, my Metroid uh, Dread review, like that wasn't like a glowing review by any. Like I mean, like I didn't give it a perfect score, and I'm 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 a Metroid fan. Like, like, like I will, I will literally shed blood, sweat and tears for, for a Metroid game, especially like the, the old school format, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I made sure to say, okay, this is why it's good. And this is what you should think about for why you may want to hold off on spending like full price for it, you know, stuff like that, you know, you know. Uh, when I and Stephanie, I'm with you. When I saw when I saw that page, that was like nothing like ten, like a ten by eight column of like of like nine point fives and tens. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, this game literally can't be that good because I'm just like Corey. This this type of game is not my cup of tea either. But at the same time, it takes a lot for me to give a game a perfect score. I'm gonna say that so right now. If, I, I'm I've sure also if, I've also heard oh, this a lot. Oh. Te- technically wrong with this game, right? Like. On the new consoles, it doesn't hit 60 frames, right? It hovers between mm-hmm. 40 and 50. Yeah, uh, that's, which is, that's, a no, it, that's a no-no. It's that's, targeting 60, and some of the reviews, the people who reviewed it on PlayStation 5 said, you should buy the PlayStation 4 version and play it on PS5. Yeah. Yeah, which that makes no sense. Like, I'm just <laughs> that, like, that's... I thought a lot of people got the PC version. Well, review. I heard the PC bro- PC version was broken. I saw is, two reviews. I saw two reviews say they had to start over on PlayStation because the PC version was so bad. Oh yeah. wow! Well, I, I think there's a level of fami- uh, being familiar with the game or with the series or that genre, and then there's expectations. Mm-hmm. And I think for a lot of people. You know, of course, it being anticipated. I think for all those soul players who were familiar with it, I think they didn't. They didn't expect it to be like this. Just going to be a regular Souls game in the mm-hmm. open world, but they feel like it surpassed their expectation. And when you're a reviewer, um, when it does that, you know, kind of uh, surpass the expectations. I think these perfect tears just show that you know, like Corey said, this is the best in it. Uh, mm-hmm. for that particular game from that particular mm-hmm. company, yeah. but sometimes you gotta real. Sometimes you gotta realize that I need to take this with a grain of salt because you're uh, you're grading the game on your experience. But if I'm not reading about the technical problems, if I'm not reading the frame drops or the game crashing and stuff like that, that stuff feels like all of that is forgiven because it's mm-hmm. in the game. But it passed my expectations as a reviewer, so I'm going to give it a ten. Now, yeah. I, now I, 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 the Souls community, they're loving this game. For us mm-hmm. on the outside who don't know it, our expect not our expectations. We're looking at it that you guys know the series, mm-hmm. and the only thing that's really been added on is just that you could go anywhere. Where you can yeah. do that in kind of any open world game. My... Um, it's just that there's no mission structure to it in a sense. My fear is like, so David Lasby is playing it and he says he's loving it and he's not really a Souls guy, right? So mm-hmm. I th- I know that there are those kind of outliers out there, but my biggest fear is like a lot of people are going to see that this game is getting tens from a lot of places and maybe they've never heard of Dark Souls maybe or maybe they don't know that this is kind of connected to that genre or whatever. And they're going to see, oh, everybody thinks this game is great. Maybe I'll check it out. And then they get in there and like, you know, Stephanie, like you said, like they'll play it for 20 minutes and it's extremely difficult and they don't know what to do or where to go or like what the systems are. And they're just going to be really disappointed. And that's my fear for this game. And, uh, (laughs) you know, I know that like, so for people that don't know, Dark Souls is usually just kind of like, there's like this hub and then it's like these other hubs that are kind of interconnected hallways with secret passages and back doors into places and secrets to unlock and secret bosses to get, you know, better weapons and crafting materials and stuff. Whereas this one is, is open world for the first time, which a lot of people are saying it really reminds them of breath of the wild on a grander scale, because some of the places you go, like in breath of the wild, you could go somewhere and you would find a shrine or a Korok seed or something. And, you know, that was awesome exploration where in this game you go, you could find like a cave or a secret boss or like a castle just randomly out in the middle of nowhere. And it actually like helps you progress through the game, which is like something yeah. that uh, is really an interesting thing. But I want to see that 
in a game in, in a genre that I enjoy, you know? And so and I know is... hold on, sorry, Ed, I don't mean to oh. I, I just want to say one more thing. And it's like I don't want to sound like I'm bashing this game because I'm not. I haven't played it. And I'm really happy that a lot of people who love Dark Souls are loving this game. I really am. Like I'm happy that From Software has finally kind of like nailed it because they haven't really nailed it since Bloodborne from in a lot of ways. Well, it, I feel like this. I feel like Breath of the Wild earned this 10 because it does some it just does open world different. I keep telling Corey, Breath of the Wild is a scientific game. It's a scientific experiment. You know, even still to this day, people are still finding ways on how to play and get through stuff, solve puzzles, and just like really break the game and learn what they could experience. And it feels with dark, it feels with Elder Ring that it it I don't feel like it deserved this 10 because you took something that's too familiar. And that people have a love for, and you just well, changed the setting. I wouldn't you, say you, that. I mean, you haven't played it yet, so you can't really definitively well, well, say yeah. that. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, be, yeah. Tre- please tread careful on those words. My, but I, I my, think, th- I think my thing is oh, I, like what I said is like I've played enough Dark Souls and Bloodborne to know that I'm not going to want to play this game. But I think it's. I think. When I think for people who are soul players who have who know the formula of souls games mm-hmm. and everything from the out and that's why I say this is just a me thing from seeing it from learning how learn knowing how those games goes and stuff you don't have really um you have a mission structure but not really a mission structure because you could go anywhere and you know you just duck roll fight and do whatever the patterns are if you learn it and sometimes they change it up I think with with Elder Wing, it feels like it was easier to get his 10, where Breath of the Wild had the kind of, in my opinion, feel like it had to earn it, because people didn't know how would the Zelda game go about. People didn't know how Elden Ring was going to go about, so I think that's yeah. an unfair statement. Yeah, I think I think everybody understood that, oh, this is Elder Ring, and this is going to be another Dark Soul game. Yeah, but, but that's they, what people they, said wait, about did, Sekiro, wait, and they, it wasn't. Wait did, they, wait, did they know that, though? Because, I, I mean, because because like I didn't know shit about Elden Ring, you know, until well, I like think they were the more second upfront. year that it won the most anticipated game award for at the Game Award show. I think I think a lot of people. I think From was a lot more upfront that this was more of a Dark Souls game than a Sekiro game because a lot of people went into Sekiro thinking it was going to be Dark Souls because yeah. they didn't they didn't say specifically that this is a different game, and a lot of people were disappointed at first and then they had to relearn how to play this type of game right whereas from software was way more open about hey if you like dark souls and bloodborne this is more in that direction than sekiro so uh and and i just i feel like you really can't do well i think unless you're pc modding it uh that's when you can really explore because somebody there's a video that a girl is playing Elden ring with the we fit uh, not the Wii Fit board with the uh oh the Ring Fit Adventure ring yeah the and Ring they Fit beat, yeah like three bosses with what the Ring they Fit playing? they were, what were they wow playing? and they're, they're playing Elder Ring with playing the, Elder uh, Ring oh, okay yeah so and that's I creative just, yeah. yeah well it's and like it's like think, the guy who oh. who beat Dark Souls with the with the rock band drums oh yeah <laughs> yeah and so I I just feel like I I. I don't know how long Elden Ring is going to last the rest of the year. Oh, it's going to last. Souls it's people gonna, are going to make it last. This is the gonna, only game yeah, they're going to play the rest of the year. It's going to last, yeah. Yeah, like, I, you know, that's not me. That's not me trying to, like, affirm the game by mm-hmm. any way, shape, form, or fashion. But, you know, like, but it, it's got its fan base. Just like, let's let's look at it this way. It's got its fan base just like Monster Hunter has its fan base. Just like mm-hmm. Destiny has its fan base. Just like Halo has its fan base. Just like, um, what, what are some other continuous games right now? You know, it has its fan base right now. Like, not a lot's going to shake it. Just like, just like how, like, we, you know, it's so, yeah, like. The Elden Ring is going to be talked about for for a hot minute, and especially because like all those fancy nerds out there, they get boners when they hear George R R Martin's name. Uh, yeah, and well, I, I think it's I don't know. So it's it kind of feels like, like I said earlier, I feel like it didn't it doesn't earn this ten. Maybe it did because I like I said I haven't played it, but I feel like Breath of the Wild did earn it because it changed on how we approach open world games. It approached on how when you ha- do have freedom in the game, 
how to get there is up to you on how you want to do it. And then knowing that it got all of these physics based things that, you know, these costs and effects and everything to get there or to get around the game, still seeing that from 2017, that kind of showcases on why it earned this 10. I think I, I want to say, I, I want to say, I fear we're treading into some, some territory here because none of us here have played this game, so we can't really talk about it. Like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I, I, that's what I'm saying. This is just a me thing, and I, I don't know. I, I'm just gonna see. I just, I think I want to see how long Elder Ring goes out for the rest of the year. And people passes. are still playing Bloodborne and Dark Souls One. Yes, exactly. It's gonna last for years. This, and we're starting to talk in circles. I, I feel yeah. bad because this was not my necessarily my intention to just pick on Dark Souls with this topic. So if anyone who's already wanting to unsubscribe to this, please don't. Like, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't my, that's not my intention. I'm not trying to pick on Elden Ring. Oh, no, it just, no, no, it's the, right. Eighty percent of our the, audience is Nintendo listeners anyway, so it's fine. Yeah. Well, no, no. I, no, the main. Okay, so the main gist of your of, of your topic was what makes a game like you know a, a perfect game versus what makes a game earn a perfect score. Am I right? Pretty much, and I just, okay. you know, Elden Ring just happened to be the the jumping point off mm-hmm. of it because it is the most recent game to get this ten out of ten out of ten, like from numerous numerous um, mm-hmm. right viewers. Here's here's something here's something I here's something I would say to to like to like to like help out with that with that question. Um, what I would say is okay, so there's usually like there's usually like something that that's that makes the game what it is like there's an x factor to it and that cannot be denied that's why that's why every year when a, when a when a zelda game comes out all the nintendo fans are like this is game of the year you know that's why you know every year when when a good halo game comes out all the halo fans are like this is game of the year or just like a lot of the a lot of the sony fanboys that know sony's pedigree for like third person you know like action style games and stuff like that they claim they swear all of them are game of the year you know it doesn't matter if it's last of us or if it's uncharted or if it's or not days gone but you know <laughs> you know <laughs> I didn't mean to sound so dismissive, but you, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like, there's usually yeah. an X factor to it. Now, when you have that X factor, and and let's put Elden Ring in that category for a second. Elden Ring has an X factor because like it has the draw of the studio plus the creative plus the creatives behind it. You've got From Software, but you've also got George R R Martin, which right there alone, like a lot of people know, the game's going to be in good in good hands. You know. And let's let's flip this for a second. We just talked about Babylon's Fall and how like it's looking like it's going to be like one of the worst games Platinum has ever tried it out the doors and so like that. By by name recognition alone, Babylon's five Babylon's Fall five. I'm thinking the sci-fi. <laughs> Babylon's, <laughs> Fall, <laughs> Babylon's Fall. Babylon's uh, Fall. Babylon's Fall should also have like its own X factor because it's Platinum Games. So that's a company we trust. But Corey said on Crossroads what? last night, and I actually had to back it up. Like. Like platinum, platinum does good when they have the right entity supervising their projects and stuff like that, and and so we've got an X factor, you know, for why the game is what it is. But then, you know, to objectively sit down and say what makes this game like a good game, a perfect game, an A plus, an A plus plus, an S, an S plus game, or a mm-hmm. perfect ten or whatnot, you gotta break down like what's going. on on in this game and i'm not just talking about story and like the combat but you gotta break down you gotta look into every single thing that makes this you gotta look at every ingredient in this game to see and if you can look at everything point out the reasoning for it there's a justification for why it's a perfect game I, um, I, and i think that's where comp- the the level of comparisons come in because sometimes a lot of games that that is perfect, not perfect or good. A lot of games that you know, when sometimes when they get reviews, you see certain a certain title get compared to that game, um, and it it happens a lot in reviews. And some even some people were wondering why is uh this game could get compared to this game? You know, mm-hmm. I we we and uh we, we was talking about why Nintendo games get compared to a lot of reviews for a lot of games. And as much can as you, can, people, you, can you give me an example real quick? Pretty much like Breath of the Wild. A Breath lot of Wild, Breath of the Wild got compared to what? Well, Elden Ring. Elden okay, Ring is, Bre- okay, Breath of the Wild is you mean Elden Ring got compared to you, Breath of the Wild. El- that's, Elder, that's, what, 
that's, yeah, what, that's, that's what you have to mean because you can't you, you can't use an old game to compare to, you can't use a, 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 a new a game, new game. A, a get old game to compare to a new game a, that, that, it doesn't work like that you right. have to use, so you, have Elder, to use a, you have to use a new game you have to use a new game and give it comparisons off of an old game so elder route uh elder route elder ring was getting compared to um was getting compared to uh uh, uh, Breath of the Wild. There's a game called Bugs Fable that was getting compared to Paper Mario. Um, uh, Mario Kart got compared. To, what Mario Kart got compared to? Blur. Uh, so the blur? game. Wait, so Blur? Yeah. Okay, those yeah. people. Those people are jackasses. So, 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 <laughs> so the company, the company who, uh, who made Blur, you know, they said that their game was gonna be better. Was making fun of Mario Kart. Was they, you know, they was gonna, you know. Out overthrow Mario Kart, but and the result Mario Kart thrive and stuff. I love, but, I, 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 love, I love their moxie. Hey man, hey, you have to have a target. You know, okay, mm-hmm. you have to have a target when you when you develop. You know, like if your target is like a rival game or or something, good for you. If your if your target is like a rival audience, good for you. If your target is just if your target is just simply we want to make a pure purely fun game, good for mm-hmm. you and stuff like that. You know, like. You guys, you guys shoot for something because, like, if you don't, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like the whole thing about a, a, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. Like, Blur was like, hey, like, we're gonna make the next Mario Kart game, you know, stuff like that. And you know, hey, yeah, good kudos. Like, did it, it, did it happen? No. It, it, there, and some, even some, even the Metro Vega games, they Super Metro is always being brought up, and yeah, not so Mario, much as uh, Super Mario. Super Metro set the bar. Right, but you would think that when you're speaking about Metrovania games, Castlevania Symphony of the Night would be brought up, but even that game got compared to Super Metroid. Yeah. So I think so. I think sometimes. Well, well, yes. Yeah. And, 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 you gotta and look, sounds... you gotta look at the timing. You gotta look at the timing of these games. Just like just like look at all look at all these games that came out. Look at all these games that came out. Like look at I guarantee you, Project Triangle is going to get compared to Final Fantasy Tactics: War of the Lions. Mm-hmm. I guarantee yeah. you. I guarantee you, it's because it's because certain games set a bar, and mm-hmm. that's how these things work. It's just like uh, let's 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 look at let's look at let's look at a different level. Let's look at a different level. Like like look at <laughs> I'm gonna use a food analogy now. <laughs> look at all these look at all these fast food restaurants that came out with their own chicken sandwich when Chick Fil A dominated the chicken sandwich scene for so long. They all came out like bucking for for Chick Fil A. Like Popeyes had one. McDonald's has always had chicken sandwiches, but apparently, yeah. like you know, like no one talked about them until a certain point in you, you know, like in the life cycle of fast food, you know, so like that. Them chicken, there's, my, them there's chicken always, sandwiches is bomb big. There's always, but there's always, there's always a target. There's always, you know, something that sets the bar. Like the bar in, in the food analogy for that particular thing was the Chick Fil A sandwich. You know, you know, mm-hmm. and you, you know, like Chick Fil A had like bad press going on because you know the way like their 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 board director directors and stuff were doing stuff you know with with lgbtq people and stuff like that so you know it made them a target like wendy's jumped on them mcdonald's jumped on them popeyes jumped on them <laughs> zaxby's they they jumped on them you know they shouldn't have jumped on them but they, they jumped on them <laughs> <laughs> and so like that so yeah same thing applies here you know um and and i don't want to i don't want to beat it too much beat it down too much more but you know ultimately everything has a rival like you know like monster hunter games have 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 other games, there's games that come out and they're immediately like either a clone to Monster Hunter or they're comparable to Monster Hunter in some way. I pay attention to that stuff. I don't like those games. Like Dauntless is probably the first game that probably comes even close to doing it right, you know. But that's a stretch too, you know. Um, but you know, yeah, that's that's honestly how it is. So it's not that games like Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart, Paper Mario, and all that stuff are getting dogged on. It's that those games set a bar, and this is what everybody's trying to achieve. So yeah, once again. Nintendo's like the number one video game company in the world, and, and I'm just so. using them as a as an example because they show up in a lot of reviews when it comes to comparisons. And I think when you think about what makes a game good, what makes a game perfect, first of all, whatever makes it perfect and good is your personal thing. Whether you agree with a reviewer, a, a community, or whatever, if you pay for the game or playing it on Game Pass or any way that you achieve it aside of or side the private, uh, private, uh, private team. Uh, any way that you achieve it, whatever experience that you come out from it is going to make you claim that it's good or not. So just because you see, uh, see, do see a review score, sometimes it's not, it's not that ten for you. Sometimes it may not even be that five. You might literally get surprised. Crackdown three got trashed. Well, that's because it was a bad game. 
but I enjoyed it. I uh, I felt like I, I literally felt like that that was an eight point five or not. The last Guardian got like because of the delays, it, people didn't like it with the controls. But I love it. I claimed it as one of PlayStation uh, best games. I'm glad you're using those words to say that because guess what? At the end of the day, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Like yeah. I mean, like the best, like 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 three of the best games I played last year. Two of them were Monster Hunter games: Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories Two. Two of the best games I played last year, you know. Yeah. But yeah, those games didn't win. I think I think Monster Hunter Rise got one award. That was from the Game Awards. You know, I don't take the Game Awards that seriously. Right. <laughs> so I think I think it's just a personal thing of what you proclaim as good. And you could you could with reviews, they're just inform you of what you're going to get out of the game. Yes, a score or a great letter is always perfect and or whatever you take that as, but it's actually reading the context, or even if you watch the video, it's getting something out of it, so when you go in, it's preparing you, this is what you should expect. And sometimes, what they say may not be what's, what you expected when it's in execution, when you personally play it. You know, it, what you see from the videos is always going to be different than what you're actually seeing on TV because you may not be able to do what they're doing in the video mm -hmm. or anything. You know, D DMC Devil May Cry, I always go back to that on how good that game is. And just because people didn't like it uh, because it was a new direction for Devil May Cry and Ninja Theory was doing it, they just literally dismissed the game. But if you look at the reviews, it's a bunch of nines and nine point fives. We still here at Boss Rush, who ever played it, still say it's one of their great, one of the great games in the DMC franchise. Mm -hmm. You know, I think. We, I mean, I think there's a oh, lot of like, <laughs> there's a lot of revisionist history on DMC right now, like because yeah. everybody loves Ninja Theory right now because of Hellblade and whatever this Project Mara thing is, and like, and a lot of people. Because, like, it didn't start with DMC. It started with Odyssey to the West, uh, Enslaved, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. everybody hated that game when it came out. And then, like, you know, once Hellblade, once Hellblade came out, everyone was like, oh, yeah, the DMC game and Odyssey, Enslaved, Odyssey to the West, those are their best games. And we we're like, I feel like, I feel like, Heavenly Odyssey, Sword. I feel like, I feel like Odyssey, uh, no, Heavenly Sword, Heavenly Sword was well reviewed. Yeah, Heavenly Sword was pretty well reviewed at the yeah. time. But, like, man. I like I don't know. I there's a lot of revision there's a lot of revisionist history on a lot of games that people talk about these days and it really bugs me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, you know it's um it's cool that um it's it's uh, Ed, Ed uh you mentioned it and um and you mentioned it about like how games are reviewed and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. you know what? Some of it is also on like the the consumers, you know, like mm -hmm. folks need to be uh, more objective when they read these reviews. Don't just be like, oh, Game Informer said this is a ten, so I go get it, you know. Yeah, they don't, gotta don't right. just be. I mean, it's about finding people like that. that you trust too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I I think I think the way like the old ways of looking at reviews and buying games is kind of archaic at this point, you yeah. know. You got to find people that you trust in terms of the games that you like. If you like, if you know what kind of things that this person likes and you kind of gravitate toward this person because you kind of like the same things, then you trust this person. You don't need to go to like a to IGN and, and read their, you know, uh, uh, outsourced kind of mm -hmm. freelance review of something. Right. Because you don't even know who that person is. And and. They don't have anybody on camera anymore that reviews games, you know, regularly. They don't have anybody on their podcasts that review games regularly, right? They're either part of, like, the Wikis team or, like, the sales team or their job literally is host, right? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. the only person I yeah. think I really trust anymore at IGN in terms of, like, their game reviews or games that they're talking about is uh, Ryan McCaffrey and, and, and Destin, right? Like, the Unlocked team and... Uh, I mean, this is coming from someone who used to go to IGN like every day for like a decade. Uh, you know, back in the day, it was one one up dot com because for me, of course, of EGM. Yeah. But I read the reviews to people who played those games, and I trusted them more than anybody else. And what I when I bought that game and I read after reading their reviews, I agree a lot with what they said and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, the Gears of War one was something else, but. That even like you, you were talking about Corey. That took a uh, 
that took a while for me to get into mm-hmm. because I really did not think when I first played it on 360, I did not think Gears of War was a perfect 10 when Dan Shu gave it. I thought that game was clunky with the controls. I mean, the first, but, one, but the then, first one is pretty clunky, right? It's it's almost an Uncharted, mm-hmm. an Uncharted situation. But I think the reason why Gears gets a pass and Uncharted 1 doesn't at this point is because, like, we had never seen anything look like Gears of War before when it hit, yes. right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Unless you had like a super powerful PC, right? We have never seen anything that looked like Gears of War at that time. Whereas when Uncharted, like Uncharted One, came out, we had already had Gears, we had Oblivion, we had you know all these games at that point. We had Halo Three, I think, at the time, right? We had all these games that looked incredible and played incredible. And Uncharted One, although like the story was great and the characters are fun plays like crap right i mean i think we can all kind of agree that uncharted is not the best playing game on the market yep. uh mm-hmm. you know obviously it got better as the as the series went on but you don't go to uncharted to play the game you go for the story and the characters and the banter and the shenanigans right i mean that's why yep. you go uh so but yeah i mean to your point ed like i i tried to play the original gears of war pro- a couple months ago and it you compare that to Gears Five, it's like they're two totally different games, <laughs> even yes. though the mechanics are the same. They're just Dang. yes, like, it's clunky. Like Marcus feels tanky. Like the the roadie run feels slow. The cover system is remember, like remember that marketing gimmick they tried to say for uh, for Gears of War. Like the reason why the characters move so slow is because all the gear that they have on their on their on their body. Wow, you remember that marketing? Yeah. <laughs> I remember an Xbox rep coming into a, coming into play, in the GameStop trying to trying to tell me <laughs> that. And I was like, really? I was like, I was like, number one, like that makes no sense, you know, like you know, like just say, you know, just say, like you know, the the game is designed to be slow paced like that, you know, yeah. just yeah. say that, yeah. you know. Don't, and I think, don't 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 piss on my back and try and say it's raining. And I think <laughs> I think we when a game in a series evolves. It and you know, because the first games are not always going to be a perfect 10 and everything, it all it literally takes time for a series to get to that point to yeah. grow. I mean, it's, um, Assassin's the, mechanics, Creed. Oh. it's the Assassin's Creed situation, right? Where one is mm-hmm. a proof of concept and two is the better game. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like this until your game gets to the level of Mega Man 2 versus Mega Man 3. If you got a good job, if you do a good job for a game, just take it like that. Because Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3 is like the games for a heated argument with gamers. Even though that's old school and retro, nope. they're both good games, but people choose which one is better than the other. No, nope. Mega Man 3 is better than Mega Man 2 because Mega Man 3 has all the bosses from Mega Man 2. Bam. <laughs> Hell yes. Lawyer. Is... No. Dude. Dude. No. Dude. no. No. Mega Man 2 is better. The soundtrack, the 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 bosses. I'm just, the kid, I'm just kidding. I've never wait, played how, either how game. You, I just know that. Wait, that's how are you gonna say the bosses are better in Mega Man Mega Man Two versus Three when the me- all the Mega Man Two bosses are in the freaking game in Mega Man Three? <laughs> but you have to you have to trust you all that method three to fight them into. That doesn't that doesn't Dude, matter? Mega like, Man Four oh, is oh, the oh, real oh, best oh, game oh, because you get Keiji rushed. Inifune, Keiji Inifune and his and his team they knew what they were doing. They they knew what they were doing when they did when they did Mega Man three the way they did. Stephanie, hmm. did I just make my point about saying Mega Man two versus Mega uh, Mega Man three being a hot debate? I thought we were talking about open yeah. world games. <laughs> <I know. laughs> that's and what I said. When games. your game gets that's what I said. When your game gets to that level, if you do a good job, you know that you just take it. Uh-huh. Master, Master RPG in the chat. He's like, stay out of it, stuff. Don't yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like but trying I'm... to stay neutral here. I'm like, mm-hmm. I will say, I do love Mega Man Two, and I love Mega Man Three. I, oh, I, I love them, I love them both. I, I love them both. I can't, I can't honestly make a determination of which game I actually like more because Same. I, because I play them back to back. Like I, I can't spend a weekend and play Mega Man Two and not, you know, turn around and play Mega Man Three. Shoot, I think I stream Mega Man Three more than I stream Two, which I need to restream it. Cause I still I love fighting that dragon. I I love going through those levels and hearing that music from Mega Man Two. Um, all right. So ultimately, so. U- ultimately, uh, for all of our listeners who are still here, did, we didn't put to sleep or you know like run away. No, they're listening. <laughs> they love Ed's hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> 
ultimately what it all what it all boils down to is that is that you know like you have to make your own informed decisions sometimes when it comes to, mm. to, to these games. Like you have your favorite games, and you and your heart of hearts knows like if your game, if your favorite game itself is a perfect ten. You guys have heard me just say I've listed off a lot of my favorite games, like 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 Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter World, uh, Metroid Dread, and stuff. And you notice I didn't say any of those games were perfect. And those are games that stay on rotation in my in my system right now and stuff like that. It's so it's all based on it's all based on how you feel. But when it comes to other people's words. Like you need to read their words and truly examine what they're saying. If you read their words and truly examine what they're saying in these reviews and stuff, you get to understand like what this person is about. If it's a pure fanboy, you're gonna figure it out real fast. If it's someone who's actually who's actually knows their knows their 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 salt or is worth their salt, you know, in in games and reviews and stuff like that, you'll you'll see it immediately and you'll know, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. So I kind of trust his nine point five or his or his nine point seven five or his ten. You know, I trust it. You know, so. There you go. There you, there you have it. Yeah, enjoy what you enjoy. You know, whatever you consider as game of the year to you or whatever you consider good or bad, you know, that's all on you. Whatever whatever way that you uh you buy it, play it, you know, come in come across of it. If you enjoy it and it's great to you, that's all that matters. Like like Nicki Minaj says, like what you like. The only perfect Damn. game that has ever existed is Tetris. That's you know my what? opinion. That <sighs> Corey? Yeah. Hold on. I got something coming to you. Coming to you. Oh, through no. our chat right now. Is it another TikTok what? video? Through oh, our God. chat right I... now. I mean, okay. <laughs> oh, and no, our audience cannot see that. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wow. funny. I'm I was choking. saving that. I, I was saving that one. <laughs> I'm choking right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Oh boy. Uh, but I also have a confession to make. I've never played Mega Man two or three. So what? Uh, what? I I am not surprised. I am I am literally not surprised. Ed, you knew this. We had a whole POW block episode on it, like real early <laughs> on. I've, I mean, I've played them, but I've never think, like gotten far in them. I also believe I remember hearing you say that on one on one of the games cast y'all had, where where Ed was like basically raping the hell out of Mega Man Two, and and you were talking about it in the background while he was playing. Just saying, that's fine. See, I remember, I remember this stuff. Laurent remembers. Maybe we need to revisit. <laughs> Corey, we talk about so much game, so many games, and so many episodes. You're supposed it's... to remember everything we talk about because I sure as hell can. <laughs> Dude, we're about to go 300 episodes on <laughs> the Pablo. Not the episodes with Aaron. I know, and at least 25% of them has been talking about Breath of the Wild. So. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> uh, I still love our Metroid Hell Divers. I really want to see that game. Oh my <laughs> gosh, like... dude. That's uh... the game that. Federation Force should have been. We're 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 getting ahead of ourselves here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I so I didn't realize that. And speaking of Nintendo Power Block, I didn't realize that all the episodes weren't on the podcast feed. So uh, didn't I, didn't I tell you? Somebody told me. Didn't I tell you? Maybe, maybe you did. I don't know. I think Stephanie mentioned it too. I'm going to give credit to Stephanie because I'm mad at you right now. Ah! Wow! <laughs> hey, it had no, to happen so that's some- how it works. It had to happen sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so I get benefit only when Laurent pisses is in the doghouse. Gotcha. Is in the doghouse. <laughs> wow! Hey, Stephanie, guess what? Guess who was invited on Crossroads last night? And guess who wasn't again? Laurent Dawkins. <laughs> Hey Stephanie, this is my official invitation to you uh, to join us on Crossroads next week. Don't, don't accept a pity invitation. I, don't, don't accept want, a pity invitation. I don't want that pity invitation. Stephanie, you're welcome on Nintendo Power Block. Every Monday, you're available. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. All I'm right, back now. I've only been back for one episode, but there's Laron knows if I'm that's free on the Tuesday, it, I'll go and ask him. Hey, you look, got a, it got a it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I asked Laron, I'd be like, "Hey, you got a free?" Oh my gosh, uh, there Tuesday. are so many episodes missing on here. 
Oh my gosh, there's like chunks, <laughs> big chunks of episodes missing. Ed, what did you do? I didn't do nothing. You're in charge of the uh, the channels. Well, shut up. See? Well, it looks like I'm staying up all night to fix this garbage. In other words, I'll be online with you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <Talk>. <laughs> Anyways. But, yeah, what but that's a good, that was a great topic, Stephanie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm glad, you know, got got a, got a good, no, it was, it was a good conversation piece. Passionate it was <laughs> conversation, yeah. But I'm ready to move on. You know what a bad open world game is, and people keep calling it an open world game, and it's not. What is, what is it? It's Destiny. Oh. They are not see, open worlds. See, look, look, the look, the Destiny fan. See, this is what this is what I said. Like, you know, like this is objective. This is objective thinking, because like a Here. true fanboy would have been like, nah, this game is like the the best. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Destiny has a lot of like hubs that you can kind of explore and do what you need to do, but literally mm-hmm. every planet and every area is a giant circle. It's literally a yeah. giant circle with like branches and like you can go underground, above ground in these mazes underneath, right? But like ev- it, like if you look at, if you pull up like a map of any destin any destination on uh, in Destiny. Pull up, pull up the Cosmodrome map, for example. It's literally just a giant circle. But there's nothing like Metro Prime Three, which makes it really easy for somewhere. someone who gets lost, like me, because all I know is if I keep going straight, I'm sure it's gonna be. It's just a big NASCAR track. I'm just gonna turn left sometimes, and I'll end up where I need to go. I guess NASCAR. Well, then. Speaking of places that have hubs and stuff, then, like, you know, as I'm playing through Pokemon Arceus, I, why do people keep throwing the ter- term open world there where, I don't know, like, it's great, I'm not criticizing it, but I don't consider Arceus really open world. I think it's because it doesn't have, like, a mission structure. It's just okay. like you could go anywhere. Um, yeah. With that. yeah. I, I think, yeah but I think, I'm not qualified to talk about the game. They are played. saying that Scarlet and Violet are open world games. We'll see. That's kind of exciting. Yeah. I'm excited for Scarlet and Violet, by the way. I haven't been this excited about a Pokemon game in a while. I would like to know why you're excited, because the reason why I'm excited is because I I think our history is similar, Corey. Like, I only played Red and Blue and Gold, Silver. Like, after those mm-hmm. two generations, I just, either I grew out of it or it was just too many Pokemon, too many stupid oh, Pokemon. Oh, really? Games. Yeah, too many stupid Pokemon was the reason why I stopped. There's too many Pokemon, first of all, and then there's too many trash pokemon there's literally garbage bags of pokemon garbador yeah, yeah one yeah. of them was literally a garbage bag one of them was a chandelier one of them was an ice cream <laughs> cone what the heck are they gonna have like a shoe yeah is there a shoe they pokemon will. so and but it was because of arceus that somehow like re-stimulated my i wouldn't say fu- i'm fully back to pokemon madness again mm. but it, it's enough to hook me for the next series and i think that's what arceus mm-hmm. was meant to do well, I- yeah. i'm guilty because i'm a nintendo fan i you know I you love are nintendo, oh really oh no yes. well, really newsflash that's that's why i've been by i continue to buy all the pokemon games and plus i love rpgs and i love i just love the series um i'm shocked that you didn't uh at the you know what <laughs> We're not about to have all. We're not about to have the shape tonight. I didn't do anything. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Corey, I love you, Corey Naran. Well. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I swear I didn't say anything. I quote I of the you. night, Ed. What? I'm a Nintendo fan. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the title of the episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Let's Nintendo fan. Let's go here for a second. No, no, but I, because a lot of people, you know, who say that they're a Nintendo fan, they support all the Nintendo games that come out, and it's not always a series that people get into. And so, when it comes to Pokemon, you know, a lot like you guys said, a lot of people play up to us to the point, and then they stop playing. Where with me, I've been playing the game consistently, but as a Nintendo fan, I don't, I haven't went out to go get Stadium Column or um, the camera game that came on N64. Or mystery dungeon, like I'm not all, and I'm not, I'm not into all the side Pokemon games. Now, Pokemon was fun. I enjoyed that because that was something different. Um, but like for the main series, I've been a big supporter of. So, mm-hmm. 
that's why I say as a Nintendo fan or I'm a Nintendo fan, but this May series with the games coming out, I've always been playing all of those. Um, I think, well, to be honest with you, like my, my nephew is my nephew. Uh, my younger nephew is really into Pokemon right now. And my daughter and him are like really close. And so my daughter kind of tangentially is into Pokemon. She like, she loves Pikachu and she loves Squirtle. Right. And Aww. so she's like, she's always po- pointing at, you know, if a Pokemon is on TV or on my switch or something, she's pointing at it and like, she's like, where's Pikachu? Where's Squirtle? I want to see Squirtle. And so, your daughter, uh, your daughter's like that TikTok. It's Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Clefairy. <laughs> uh, so I, I actually thought about, uh, re-downloading the let's go games and having her play with me uh, just so she can like kind of feel like she's participating and because like every time i have my switch out or something she's like can i play can i play and so (laughs) like i've kind of put my switch light i've kind of put some kid friendly games on there so like when she's like really ready then she'll kind of you know it'll be kind of easier into it like I know she likes across the room too. She likes oh god. No, she's kinda done with that phase, hopefully, knock on wood. Uh but yeah, I've been I think I'm gonna down re download the Let's Go games and let her play with me because uh you, I mean obviously you start out with Pikachu if you get Pikachu, and then I think Squirtle is relatively simple to find, and I think that, you know, you can have two Pokemon follow you around if you if she just can walk around with Pikachu and Squirtle and like do whatever. I think she's gonna have a blast. So, uh, but I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited for Violet and Scarlet because they kind of if they really are open world games, and it kind of has like a similar structure to the older games in terms of like let's go to the gym and fight the gym battle like maybe they, it's not like you have to go to this gym first this gym second this gym third but like if if, if it's like a gym based structure and you can just kind of catch pokemon at your leisure and kind of you know do that whole thing then mm-hmm. i'm down for that i think again it's been 25 years since i really enjoyed that so i want to i will say i want to see how they do the tm system because the TMs are going to play the part of, in that open world kind of style game. Because um, if they're like, if the TMs are just not in the game, or in, you know, anyone can just use it, any Pokemon or, or can use it at any time, I think mm-hmm. that's what's going to make it really open world. Because sometimes the cities in the games, they're blocked, the path is blocked off because you don't got that TM for that certain Pokemon to unlock it. Yeah. Plus, like, that. <laughs> The duck has ripped right out of DuckTales. Who's lying to yourself? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It just, I, I had to like look twice. I'm like, yeah. this is familiar. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. And this is going to be the first time I don't pick a fire starter, I think. I, I, this is going to be the first time I want to pick a grass starter. I'm all for weed. Yes. Oh, the. I'm grass. <laughs> the, I call it Spriggy. Nobody knows oh, how yeah, to say Spriggy. Spriggy. Sprigigato or something. Hold on, I'm trying to. I'm trying the to duck's name is like, Quaxley. Saw... That's good enough for me. Quaxley. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for something. I saw something about. Uh, I saw something about what his. Uh, what his final evolution is going to be. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. Somebody just <laughs> said it's final. It's final uh, evolution is just going to be Doja Cat. Doja. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, oh, maybe goodness. you've swayed me. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Oh, hold on! I, f- I, f- I found it. Hold on. <laughs> I was sitting to the... <laughs> uh, Stephanie Laurent. I was telling Corey that uh, Jack posted in, in um, the oh, uh, no. I chat. Saw, I saw that. Or he was like, "Yeah, it was like a green cat." <laughs> <It's> something else. <laughs> the, the, uh, the fire one was uh, was looking like a bubble bop. Was looking yeah, like bu- bop. Yeah, bubble bop. Yeah, yeah, for... And I fell out laughing <laughs> and i love bubba bobble i love that puzzle game but when they show that i i yell you know, that jack i'm like no one knows about this game and i'm just on the floor dying in tears wow wow all right, all right. Uh, i'm calling it this is the final evolution for for that for that pokemon this this right here this is the one. <laughs> oh lord <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, how come I'm missing this? You what? It's in the ch it's in the ch it's Skype in the chat. chat. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not getting anything. Oh. That makes me sad. Oh well. It's I'll I'll, I'll hey, uh, to it's, hey. it's 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 buff Donald Duck with a uh, speedo on. Okay. So. Hang on, Steph. I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you on uh on which on uh on Discord. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, man. Well, should we wrap it there? Is yeah. That, is that where we're wrapping it? Uh, yeah. I think I yeah. think that's good. I do too. We've been going for an hour and forty five minutes. It's 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 go time. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching and are listening to this episode of the Boss Rush Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Boss Rush Network. You can email the show, bossrushnetwork at gmail.com. We encourage you to listen to our network of shows, including Nintendo Power Block, Crossroads, Standard Def, After Dark, and so many more. You can check out all of our content on bossrush.net. Ed, thanks for stopping by tonight. Uh, you guys for having me. I'm going to see you tomorrow night again as well. Uh, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that virtual code. You can check out Nintendo Power Block live on Mondays and Wednesdays. You can uh, check the recorded episode and our um, audio episode on Anchor FM. And also, everybody, Optional Opinion is coming back on SoundCloud, so you guys can check that out also. Yeah. Uh, Word. Um, got some good episodes coming from that podcast so really can't, can't wait for you guys to check it out Ed doesn't podcast enough guys <laughs> uh, LaRon where can we find you uh, you can find me on social media at Exus803 uh, it's also my Twitch and YouTube channels it's also my Gamertag PlayStation Network as well as Steam um, don't forget Tuesday nights 8pm Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Exus803 Crossroads PlayStation Podcast uh, show which w which is rebranding now so it would just be called it would be called crossroads the something something or other i haven't made a decision yet on what it's going to be called uh so just just keep a lookout for that um and uh and i am and i am the main host for boss rush after dark stephanie yeah and i definitely recommend crossroads if you don't want to hear my voice so oh <laughs> oh that's mean <laughs> i'm kidding people want you stephanie can find... to host more you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author. And yeah, you'll see me uh, on After Dark and um, some standard def uh, episodes uh, hosting the Disney, classically animated Disney movies. Oh, and one more thing, everybody. Check Aww. Steph down on another Zelda podcast. She does a fantastic job talking all things Zelda. Oh, thank you, Ed. I, yeah, I did have an article that just got released um, like a week ago, and I wrote an uh, article on what are some Zelda likes, which I know is not a thing, but I'm just going to say it. Zelda like games that you can play in between dry spells. Blossom. Alandra. Ooh, I didn't think of that one. That's Rondia. Cool. Blossom Tales. You know, Blossom Tales coming out with a sequel this year, you know? Is it? Yeah. Is it? Great. Mm. Uh,. You can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me hosting uh, Standard Def, the MCU side of it with Laron. Uh, we're also doing Indiana Jones in review right now. You can also find me on After Dark and Nintendo Pal Block. So, yeah. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. Remember to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review wherever you listen to our show. Five stars, please. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Peace Bye. out.